Okay gang, let's take a look at the motion problem equation. So if you have a motion problem, there are going to be components of distance, rate, and time that we'll typically denote by D, R, and T respectively. And we refer to the rate, or the rate is also called the speed or velocity, and the variables have this equation. Or I'm sure you've heard of this before. Distance is equal to rate times time. And depending on how you want to manipulate this equation, you could solve this equation for r by dividing both sides by t. If I divided both sides by t, I would get that the rate was equal to distance over time. Or on the flip of that, I could solve both of the, or this equation for t. I could divide both sides by r. And if I divide both sides by r, I'll get d over r is equal to t. So you can take this equation and solve for the other two variables if you want. But most of the time we're looking at rate times time being equal to distance. So I'm going to read through this problem. And we're going to have a lot of variables here. We're actually going to have six of them. And we're going to try and piece them all together. And I know it sounds overwhelming, but I've got a little graphic organizer to help us. So we will be working through this. So for now, I'm going to scooch this up just so you can see all the room that we have to work this problem out. So let me get that scooched up almost as far as I can. All right, so that should give us a good chunk of, um, of space to work this out. So let's listen to the problem and try and feel out what is varying in this problem. And like I said, we're gonna have a lot of variables and that's okay. We're gonna stare them all down and figure it out. So on Saturday morning, it took Jennifer 3.6 hours to drive to her mother's house for the weekend. On Sunday evening, Due to heavy traffic, it took Jennifer four hours to return home. Her speed was five miles an hour slower on Sunday than on Saturday. What was her speed on Sunday? All right, so let's think about all of this. Imagine you're in a car, right? You're about to go to your mom's house, and it takes you 3.6 hours to drive over there. Right? But on the way back, you hit some traffic, and you're going slower. All right, so let's try and piece all of this together. Now, in terms of what's the variable? There's a lot of variables, right? You have your rate on Saturday, your time it took you on Saturday, and your distance on Saturday. You have the rate you were driving, or the speed you were driving Sunday, the time it took you to drive on Sunday, and the distance you were driving on Sunday. So we have six variables here, but we're gonna be able to fill some of these in with numbers, and some we'll have to leave with symbols, but we're, we're gonna make this work. So let's take a look at what they're asking of us. It says, what was her speed on Sunday? So I want her rate on Sunday. I would really like to know what number would have gone in this, in this table. And I organize this in a way that you see I've got the information for Saturday, where rate times time is equal to distance. And I've got it for Jennifer on Sunday, rate times time is equal to distance. And you don't have to make this graphic organizer. I just find for me it helps. It just helps me organize what's going on. We've got a Saturday journey and a Sunday journey, and I'm looking at distance equaling rate times time. All right, so this is asking, what was her speed on Sunday? So I'm gonna declare that my variable. I'm gonna say X was Jennifer's speed on Sunday. And let me go ahead and use her real name, not just say speed, I'll write Jennifer's speed on Sunday. Okay, so I will put an X here, and that will ultimately be what I'm trying to solve for. Okay, now, if I back this up, it says her speed was five miles an hour slower on Sunday than on Saturday. Let's look at the units right now. I want you to look at five miles per hour. Does that sound like a rate, a time, or a distance? And I'm hoping you're seeing that just by nature of the units here, that is a rate. And it's specifically her rate on Sunday. So that sentence is gonna help me fill in that piece of the puzzle. So if she was going X miles an hour on Sunday, that was five miles an hour slower than what she did on Saturday. So think about this, right? If you were, and let me just make these numbers up. If you were traveling 30 miles an hour on Sunday, you were going 35 miles an hour on Saturday. If you were traveling 42 miles an hour on Sunday, you were going 47 miles an hour on Saturday, right? You were five miles faster 
or I should say you were five miles slower on Sunday. I was about to say you were five miles an hour faster on Saturday. You can say that either way. But if I was going X miles an hour on Sunday, then the expression that would represent my rate on Saturday would be X plus five. All right, so whatever I was going Sunday, I was five miles an hour faster on Saturday. Or again, whatever you were going on Saturday, you were five miles an hour slower on Sunday. Okay, so we've got that. I'm gonna keep backing up. And you, you, I'm, I, I did this last sentence, now I did this sentence. Let me see what it, we've got here. On Sunday evening, due to heavy traffic, it took Jennifer four hours to return home. All right, so again, we're on Sunday, so I'm on this bottom row. When I see hours, is hours a rate, a time, or a distance? And I think you'll give me that it's a time. So I know in that number, or excuse me, in that cell, I'm gonna plug in four. Okay, so let's see what else we got. If I go down to the first sentence, it said, it took Jennifer 3.6 hours on Saturday morning. And again, you can see by units, hours here is a time. So I'm gonna put 3.6 there. So again, I've got my variable. I knew on Saturday I was going five miles an hour faster. It took me, only, it took me four hours on Sunday and only 3.6 hours on Saturday. Now, if you'll look through here, nowhere did it give me information about distance. I don't see anything that Jennifer lived 22 miles away from her mom's house. Nothing like that. So all I can do right now is leave these as variables, right? This is a distance and this is a distance. But I, I want you to also take a step back. We know something about these journeys. The distance from Jennifer's house to her mother's house is the same distance as her mother's house back to Jennifer's house. So whatever these two numbers are, they have to be equal to each other, right? You're the same distance from your mom's house as your mom is from your house. So I know these are going to be the same. Now, I've got two variables, but I also have two equations for me. You can see there's one equation in the top row. There's another equation in the bottom row. So yes, I have two variables. I have D and I have X, but that's okay. I've also got two equations for that. So I'll put D here is distance from Jennifer's house to her mother's. And I, as I had said in example one, for however many variables you have, in this case we have two, we've gotta have two equations that go with it. So let's write these out. I know x plus five times 3.6 has to be equal to d. Rate times time has to equal distance. I also know x times four has to be equal to d. All right, and all of that's fine and good. Now, for me, I like to have my variables on the right side of the equation. Here's what I mean by that. I'm gonna have d solved for, and then I'm gonna put 3.6 times x plus five here. And I'm gonna put d is equal to four x here. All right, and then what I'm gonna note is, yes, the distance is equal to four x, and it's also equal to 3.6 times x plus five, but through transitivity, then these two things have to equal each other, right? I could use substitution, right? Instead of writing D here, I'm allowed to write 4X. So as I start to really pinpoint this, I'm gonna have 4X here equaling 3.6 times X plus five. Okay, now let's distribute. I wanna simplify the right side. So I've got 4X equaling 3.6X. Let's head over to our calculator and see what 3.6 times five leaves us with. Looks like it's 18. So I'll go plus 18 here. All right, now when I subtract 3.6x from both sides, all right, I'm gonna be seeing what I have on the left side. So we'll do four minus 3.6. It looks like about 0.4. All right, so I have 0.4x here. That will equal 18 because these are going to cancel. Excuse me. All right. And then the last thing I need to do is divide by 0 0.4, and that will tell me x is equal, give me one moment, 18 divided by 0.4 is going to give me about 45 for my answer. 
All right, now X was the quantity I was looking for, right? I wanted her speed on Sunday. We've got 45. Now, whenever we have a real world problem, you're gonna have to put units on your answer. So what was this? 45 friends, 45 oranges, 45 pairs of glasses. No, this was her rate, her speed on Sunday. And our units were five, excuse me, were miles per hour. So you would tell me that Jennifer's speed on Sunday was 45 miles per hour. All right, and so I see the units there, I see the answer, and then we're good to go. Now, I, I just wanna show you an alternate version of writing this up. And I think most of us would call this x and this x plus five, but you also could have gone the other way. So I just wanna show you that option. It's a little bit more work, but in case some of you were thinking to do it that way, I, I just want you to see that it would work. So let's say I reworked this problem, and I'll, I'll scooch this up just so we can see all of it. Let's say I called x her speed on Saturday. Then the expression x minus five, because she was five miles an hour slower on Sunday, x minus five would represent her speed on Sunday. And I still have 3.6 and I still have four and all of that. And when I do rate times time equaling distance, I'm still gonna get my two equations, right? And then I'm gonna set them equal to each other. So you see me doing 3.6x equaling four x minus 20. I solve for x, now I get 50 here. And I, I wanna be clear on what this means. Again, if x is 50 for this problem, that was her speed on Saturday, which is great, except the question asked, what was her speed on Sunday? So if you had let x equal her speed on Saturday, you just have to remember that at the end, you need to actually subtract the five to get Jennifer's speed on Sunday. So it would still give us the same solution. It's just a different way of getting there and I wanted you to see both options. So let me again scroll down just a bit or scooch this down just a bit so that you can see the alternate way of doing this problem. Both are totally fine. You just, you find the one that works best for you, okay? So you can let this be x and x minus five, or I think most of us might call Saturday x plus five and Sunday x. All right, so with that, we're gonna flip to our next page and do a couple of, um, Rectangle problems. I'll see you in a bit. Bye.